Hello, I'm Pastor Denny Bell at New Hope Christian Church, 1400 South George Washington Drive in Wichita, Kansas. Our church is meeting in person at 1030 a.m. every Sunday morning. We are wearing masks, using hand sanitizer, and socially distancing. If you'd like to look us up, you can see us on Facebook and YouTube under the title New Hope Christian Church, Wichita, or check out our webpage, newhopeccwichita.org. Today's message is based on Mark 1, verse 29 through 39, and the sermon title is To Be Continued. Let's gather to catch a glimpse of God's vision for our lives and to witness the presence of Christ and to feel the Spirit of God moving around us, among us, and within us. Let us give thanks, be renewed, and share our lives as we worship God. Let's take a moment now to speak to God. Lord, our newspapers, television newscasts, and media all report troubled happenings happening all over the world and we get caught up in the midst of this chaos. Calm our spirits. Help us to focus on the love you have given to us through Jesus Christ. Remind us again that his healing mercies extend to us as surely today as it did to those people long ago. We have gathered to hear your word, to be forgiven and healed, and to find ways in which we may serve you in peace. You know our needs and concerns before our voices can even say them out loud to you. Empower us with your love to use it as a message of hope and compassion as we go out into this world, which seems to only focus on tragedy and turmoil. Let us never forget that you are always with us and we are to be a light in the darkness. Amen. Christ invites us to this table. All who desire to walk in faith with God and in peace with one another. Here, the very best of God is offered for us and to nourish our lives and encourage our spirits to share with the world. And it's also to share in the light that is known only through Jesus Christ our Savior. It is He who invites us. So let us join together in thanksgiving and praise as we receive the gifts of bread and cup, his body and blood offered, that all might have life that is eternal. Let us My, pray. what a year we've had. Definitely have been different and difficult. Some of them have been affected with having the COVID, some have survived, some didn't. What a shame that others have had friends and relatives who have passed away during the pandemic. While many others have basically been patiently waiting, imprisoned in our homes, afraid to go anywhere, some fighting for the changing goalposts throughout the pandemic, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, <laughs> three feet, six feet distance, social distance, some have stuck and been forced to stay in where they live and so forth. So as Christians, we worship and pray to God for protection to keep us safe. But we must be smart not to tempt the fate. As for personal effects, we've been basically lazy, staying at home, eating, napping, eating again, <laughs> watching a lot of TV, cooking, eating, <laughs> let the dog in and out several times a day, <laughs> give her a treat every time she wants to come in, otherwise she'll <laughs> suffer for it. <laughs> anyway, sometimes watching an interesting movie, ice skating championships, shocker basketball games, home <laughs> fixer uppers on HDTV, and others. That's been our, our, our time this past year. Mm. Thankful for Pastor Denny's gallant effort with the, her Zoom machine to bring us the worship service to our homes on Sundays. It's been very nice. It's been a blessing. God is always there to see us through all of our hard times safely. 
All we have to do is ask for his help through prayer. Keep in touch with our church members, families, and friends via phone, email, and snail mail. No matter what, Jesus is always there for us and is present in this very room through prayer with the Holy Spirit to guide us through difficulties. Most of us have escaped through nightmare COVID by being close to God through prayer. We had our first Pfizer vaccine shot last Wednesday, not waiting 21 days for our second shot. But it doesn't end there. We must still be vigilant. Follow CDC guidelines. Be smart. We all have received the vaccine and gained herd humanity, immunity. <coughs> Which brings me to this communion table as we remember what Jesus said to his disciples during the first communion meal when he told them to remember him through the emblems of communion as we do this morning, to always know that he is there for us. We are saved through his grace and our faith. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for and appreciate you to know that you are always with us in our time of need to protect us from the bad things that appear in our lives. Please be there for our church members, friends, and family who are fighting this pandemic nightmare. Amen. Christ Jesus, who called to his disciples, even as he shared a final meal with them, is calling all to remember and reflect what when we eat the bread and partake of the cup. So when he met together with the others in the room, he took bread and blessed it and broke it, and then he shared it with all, offering lots of hospitality, saying, Take, eat. This represents my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of the meal, he took the cup, poured the wine, and gave thanks to his Father above and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my life, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these mighty acts of love and grace, and, and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we really proclaim what it's all about, the mystery of faith. Well, I once was affiliated with a church where I gave regularly, on a regular basis, some money every Sunday and also the Sundays that I attended where I wasn't bringing money, um, a special tithe or offering, I would just put a dollar in the plate. And that was what we were encouraged to do in that church, to give our regular tithe and also just dig a little deeper and also give a dollar every time the communion plate came by. I mean, the offering plate came by. <laughs> And um, we were also encouraged, as all of us are here, not only to give of our income, but also of our time and our talents. And we know that this church is very good about people coming together to offer our time and give back to the, the church. So I encourage all of us to think of the many ways that we can give, both of our money, what's in our pocket change, or just... Um, just our time, all of those things come together to make us, as the Apostle Paul asks us to be, cheerful givers, because God loves a cheerful giver. And then now you are invited to be a cheerful giver and give back to the life and work of this church.
and all that you all the skills you give us to be a good and faithful servant in this world in jesus name we pray with gratitude amen so jb phillips new testament translation mark 1 29 through 39 then he got up and he went straight from the synagogue to the house of Simon and Andrew, accompanied by James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a high fever and they lost no time in telling Jesus about her. He went up to her, took her hand and helped her to her feet. The fever left her and she began to see to their needs. Late that evening after sunset, they kept bringing to him all who were sick or troubled by evil spirits. The whole population of the town gathered round the doorway and he healed great numbers of people who were suffering from various forms of disease. In many cases, he expelled evil spirits, but he would not allow them to say a word for they knew perfectly well who he was. Then in the early morning, when all it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Simon and his companions went in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. Then we will go somewhere else to the neighboring towns, he replied, so that I may give my message there too. That is why I, I have come. So he continued preaching in their synagogues and expelling evil spirits throughout the whole of Galilee. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word for God's people this morning. And the people said, So I will give a disclaimer. There were several sermons I could have preached on this one little section. And I want you to realize this is just still the first chapter in Mark. So I'm going to tell you in advance this way. There's no way the story I'm going to repeat to you is true. But I like it. And I'm going to share it with you anyway. So there once was a pastor who went into his backyard one day and he found a kitten had climbed up a tree and it was afraid to come back down. So the pastor tried to coaxing and reaching up for the kitten and even offering warm milk, but it was useless. It wouldn't come down. And the tree was not sturdy enough to climb. So the pastor pondered and thought about it, and finally he decided he'd tie a rope to his car and drove away so the tree would bend down, and then he could reach up and get that kitten. He did all of this, and he checked his progress in his car frequently, and then he figured if he just went a little bit further, the tree would be bent sufficiently for him to reach up to get the kitten. But as he inched up forward, Suddenly, the rope broke, and you can guess uh, just about what happened next. The tree went boing, and the kitten went sailing through the air out of sight. The pastor felt terrible. He walked all over the neighborhood asking people if they'd seen that little kitten. No one had. And after a while, he prayed, Lord, I just commit this kitten to your keeping, and he went back to business as usual. Well, a few days later, the pastor was at the grocery store and met one of his church members, and he stopped to say hello, and he happened to look in her shopping cart, and he was amazed to see cat food. He knew this woman didn't like cats, so he asked her, why are you buying cat food when you don't like cats at all? Well, she replied, she's, you're just not going to believe this, and told him how her little girl had been begging for a cat, and she kept refusing her. And as the begging continued, the mom got tired of hearing it, and finally she told her daughter, well, if God gives you a cat, I'll let you keep it. And she told the pastor, I've watched my child go out in the yard, get on her knees, and ask God for a cat. And I know this is going to sound crazy, she said, but as the cat, all of a sudden the kitten suddenly came flying out of the clear blue sky with his paws outspread and landed right in front of her. 
So immediately, I'm going to tell you, we're going to get into the story of Mark, where we left off from our story last week. <laughs> Jesus was quite busy while in Capernaum, where he had just taught in the synagogue. Even considering at that time they had no internet, cell phones, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it sure did not take long for the news about Jesus to get around. Jesus' mission had begun with a mighty explosion. Because why? Because he's a man of action. And earlier on that Sabbath while he was there, he performed an exorcism. And it was in a very public place. And so now Jesus and the disciples leave the synagogue to go to Simon and Andrew's home. Upon arriving, they find Simon's mother-in-law has a fever. Jesus goes to her. He heals her with a touch. The mother-in-law's response to this miraculous healing is immediately. And she begins to see to other people's needs. This home their private home had now become a public space for the many who came to Simon's door, door as the word spread quickly throughout that city about Simon's mother-in-law's restorative and transformative healing. That whole city gathered to see him and Jesus opened his heart to them all. He taught and healed the sick and in addition that he also cast out the demons. But I think it's really important to note here, when Jesus heals a sickness or illness, he does it with a touch. But when he deals with demons, he casts them out and he tells them to be quiet. And keep that in mind. But then early the next morning, Jesus gets up and he withdraws to a solitary place to pray. I mean, Jesus took time to recharge his spiritual batteries. He needed time to be refreshed. He'd been very busy. And for Jesus, a prayer life is a major part of his spirituality. No matter what, Jesus was not too busy to seek the solitude necessary to speak heart to heart with his heavenly father. He found strength in his prayer time. His ritual of praying was never just a one-time occurrence either. It was part of his daily routine, just like breathing. In fact, I think Jesus was so absorbed in his prayer time that I believe he lost track of time. And that's why the others came in search for him. I mean, Jesus was definitely a man who lived a life with prayer. We too need to spend time in prayer because it is our connection to the source of power of life, God. And all of us, all of us, every one of them, especially me lately, need a me, myself, and I time alone with God. If Jesus took time away to pray and be refreshed, what are we waiting for? We all desire and want to be free from all other distress, distractions and disturbances so that God can refuel, reconnect, and recharge us. And the only way we can help others and let the power of God flow through us is by taking time daily in a special place to pray and listen for that still small voice of God. This life of constant prayer will always reassure us that we are not alone. There once was a church community and the pastor was approached about a church member who was talking too loud in the North X before the worship service, and they just couldn't stand it. And the pastor wondered what in the world was going on, so he went in search of this church member. Well, he found that it was a woman in the church who was taking it upon herself to greet every elderly member of the congregation 
first with a hug on Sunday morning. Now, for a lot of senior citizens, a lot of them lived alone. And this was the only time during the week when they could enjoy that human connection that comes with a physical touch. And of course, as we all know, as we age, some of them were sort of hard of hearing. And because of that, this woman would talk more loudly to them as she engaged them in the, maybe for some the only conversation that they even probably would have all week. So in actuality, what had sounded like a discourteous, distracting noise to some of the members was really a caring ministry to others. I mean, this woman was an example of what it truly means to have relationships where human touch is needed. I don't know about you, but isn't that something we all miss here in our church community during this pandemic? And Ron, we're all having Ron hug withdrawals. Well, just like how many withdrawals I'm having. I bet. <laughs> it's just not the same, is it? And elbow bumps are not cool. But God wants us in relationships as a community to reach out to others in need of that connection. There's a story about a family with four children who were celebrating their mother's birthday. And the father of the children, they decided rather than go out and buy something, they were going to create their own birthday presents for their mother. And so the mother sat in her favorite chair waiting expectantly. And the oldest daughter wrote her mother a poem. Roses are red, violets are blue, you are the best mom. It really is true. And then she put that handwritten poem on a piece of paper and decorated the edges of that paper like a certificate. And after the daughter read what she had wrote and all she had done, she placed it on a silver tray and gave it to her brother. Now the oldest boy took that tray and placed a carefully drawn and painted scene of their house and their family. And for a seven-year-old, it wasn't very bad. Then he handed it to the youngest boy. And the youngest boy took the tray and set a paper dessert plate on that tray, which he had colored and decorated. The plate contained three Oreo cookies from his school lunch. They were his very favorite cookies, so this was quite a sacrifice. However, there really were four cookies, but temptation got the better of him when he was setting everything up. In fact, his mother noticed cookie crumbs on the corner of his mouth, and then he handed his tray, the tray again, to the youngest of the family, the youngest daughter, who by this time was a little distraught. She had not thought of anything or made anything. And in their excitement, the dad and the other children had forgotten all about her and hadn't helped her. But she took that silver tray. She set it on the floor with all the other gifts in front of her mom. And she stepped on that tray and said, I give you me. This is what God expects in our everyday Christian walk with him. It's like that old Willie Nelson song, you know, that says, All of me, why not take all of me? Can't you see I'm no good without you? You took the part that once was my heart, so why not take all of me? And really, that's the truth. We are not anything without our loving God. God wants all of us, not just our heart, not just our mind, not just our soul, not just our strength, but every bit of us. And God wants to bring it to him. We want us to bring it to him just like that little girl and place all we are and have and ever will be as we bow down and praise him. But let's go on with our story in Mark. Simon Peter says, everyone is searching for you. In my own paraphrased ways, I think Simon is saying, 
They are looking for you, Jesus. They are all here. You're a hit. You're a big success. <laughs> but let's realize, I don't think Peter really understood the truth he had just said. When the disciples stated that everyone was searching for Jesus. Isn't that the desire of every person? It's not just in Mark. We all need God. Our deepest desire from our hearts is to be in a right relationship with the almighty God who is searching for us too. So where do we have the opportunity to meet him? Well, I think the answer is simple. We find him through our prayer time. And through our prayers, we can speak heart to heart with the one whom he, we know loves us all the time, unconditionally. And in our prayers, we can speak about those things that are important to us and also about those things that are important to God. Through this vital encounter, in prayer time, we gather strength to meet head on every encounter we will have during each day for the rest of our earthly lives. Through prayer, our love for others will be sparked, which gets a fire going within us so that we can reach out to others just like our loving Jesus did. And through our prayers, we can be the people, the children of God for others, as was Jesus. Jesus says to his disciples, well, then we better be moving on. Because why? Because he was on a mission for God. He could have stayed in Capernaum and he could have become a local hero. But he chose to move on so he could introduce others to the kingdom of God. Jesus did not come to settle down in one town as a local healer or a holy man. He came to preach throughout the region of Galilee. He had come to do God's will, not to seek his own advantage or popularity or even become a celebrity. That was not what Jesus was all about. A few years ago, I watched, wasn't too sure what I was watching, but I loved it. It was a wonderful, quirky, and funny movie. It's called Pow Wow Highway. And it involves two Native American men who set out from the reservation in Montana to go to Santa Fe, New Mexico, to get their friend and their sister out of jail. Now, the more comical of the two characters his name is Delbert, and he has named or nicknamed his car, which he calls his pony, Thunder. And his friend Redbow is more intensely a Native American with a strong identity with the struggles and sorrows of the land and its people. The two set across the country on Highway 70, but Delbert insist upon stopping at every single holy site along the way to New Mexico from Montana. And at one point, the two arrive in the middle of the night at Bear Butte, just outside Sturgis, South Dakota, where Delbert climbs the holy mountain and waits and prays up there until the dawn comes. Now, as he arrives back at the car, the irritated Red Bow asks him, What in the world are you doing, Delbert? We are headed south to Santa Fe, and you've got us way up here in the middle of nowhere. Delbert carefully and wisely replies, We're gathering our strength, just gathering our strength to get ready for the journey ahead. This is why Jesus took time to pray alone. He was getting strength to change the world, and he calls us to do the same. He 
continues to offer us hope no matter what we are experiencing. And he continues to push us to move forward, to share the good news rather than curl up on the sofa with a bowl of popcorn and watch Netflix. That's not what he's asking us to do. Now more than ever, there is an urgency to proclaim the gospel. And Jesus is offering us hope. Jesus tells us it is the time now to proclaim the kingdom of God and the good news to all we encounter along life's highway. Nothing, absolutely nothing, should stop us from being a disciple of Christ as God has intended us to be. Do not let the normalcy of life keep you from doing what is spectacular. Remember, prayer brings us into the very presence of God, and we are the only ones who can introduce others to the family of God. We have a job to do, and it's not a small one. As believers, we need to help others recognize their need for a Savior. We are the only ones who can show them what it means to be transformed and restored into Christ's image through our daily practices of prayer for the guidance that God can only provide. We could show others what it means to decide to keep following Jesus every day of our lives. We can love others as Christ first loved us, who made love visible and tangible for all. So let us gather our strength to carry on the mission of God. We've got a job to do. Our stories are to be continued for the rest of our earthly life. What exactly was Jesus doing? (laughs) Why? He saw the bigger picture. This man whose life was built upon a rock our firm foundation. Let us pray. God, our loving Savior, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you that your son healed the sick, drove out demons, and brought your good news of salvation. Make us whole in our body and our spirits so that we are free to serve you We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus has come to heal our spirits and our souls. The demons of arrogance, indifference, and apathy are being cast out as new life is offered to you through Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad.